Hello, React Summit. I'm very excited to be here today to talk about Next.js adapters. And this has been our effort over the last few months to make Next.js more open and deployable wherever you want to deploy it. All right. So to start, I'm JJ Casper. I've been at Vercel for the past six years now, working on mostly Next.js. And I absolutely love open source and everything we can do with it. And I'm excited to see how much further we can take it. Um, all right, so a quick overview. We had gone through a lot of history with deploying Next.js. Way back in the beginning, we had mostly just node servers. So we had like Docker environments, we had now v1, if you've been along for the journey that long. Um, and then we tried to like move into this new world of serverless. But putting a whole entire node server inside of a serverless function wasn't super easy. So we tried to figure out how to do that. And we came up with like this target serverless mode. And it basically tried to bundle all of your code into these like as small as possible bundles. But we ran into some issues with that, which mostly came down to native modules and trying to read from the file system and things like that. So we were like, okay, what's next? And then we tried this mix mode, which we called output standalone for the most part. And that one tried to do a mix of bundling as much as it could, but also tracing the files it couldn't bundle so that you could create a zip file with everything you needed and still be like as optimized as possible. But there's still some shortcomings with that because you still need a server to resolve the route URL to a entry point and load it and have all that logic. And so we tried to take the next evolution for adapters. So going back to the deployment challenges, most platforms have very specific handling. So Netlify, Vercel, Cloudflare, we all have different ways of handling like primitives. And with like just a node server, it can't be optimized for each platform as much as you want it to be. And Next.js has docs, but when it comes to reading from the .next folder, it can change here and there. It's not covered by Sember. And so that causes the need for reverse engineering, which nobody wants to have to do constantly. And we had like the limited flexibility, and this caused complex deployment pipelines, which Nobody really wants. So introducing adapters. You have your Next.js app. You write it as normal. And you should have an adapter layer you don't have to worry about. So your provider can optimize as much as possible. And if you really want to go crazy, you could write your own adapter and do whatever you want with it, hopefully. So this is the adapter interface we came up with. We wanted to keep it as minimal as possible so that we don't give too many hooks to cause issues but at the same time, give the right amount of hooks, you can optimize it and control it as much as you need to. So we have a name, so you know which adapter you're using. So this might be Netlify, Docker, or Vercel, et cetera. And then we have a modified config, because talking with a bunch of providers, we saw the need to customize your config based off the environment you're in. So you might need to like toggle uh, like custom end variables or stuff like that. And then on build complete, this is the most magic we provided, which gives you a structured output of all the manifest entries, all of the entry like outputs, all the static files, middleware, and it lets you handle them as you need. And this will be covered by Semver, so there's no need to reverse engineer. There's no issues from that. And it can be platform specific optimizations, and it's just much more structured, much safer. And then this gives you like the type interface for this adapter, and it's just two hooks. And we hope that this is all that's needed. And as we iterate with our partners and ourselves, we will iterate on this API and stabilize it and also document it. So this is that modified config hook we talked about, which gives you the existing config we loaded and lets you modify it and return whatever you need to change. And then the on build complete, which gives you all the routes we generated for your headers, your rewrites, your redirects, and then the outputs, which is the bulk of it. And then one of the biggest lifts of this change was basically we had to refactor our next server interface to basically allow each entry point to handle its own responses. And this allows it to be much more optimized because you can deploy each entry point to its own function or its own server, and it doesn't have to all be coupled together in a monolithic fashion. And this gives you better cold start performance, and it allows you to scale much easier, and it's just much more flexible. But this was like kind of a hidden effort under the ad adapter change, because it's not like a config. It was basically refactoring of the underlying code base. 
Um, and it was really fun getting to work with all the partners. So Netlify, Cloudflare, OpenNext, and Amplify. They all jumped into the channel and like chimed with their feedback from issues they had with deploying. And it was great because we all can make our experiences better together. And I love that. And like we identified like API that like we even had pain points. Then we were like, oh, we can solve them together. Um, yeah. So following on with adapters, like a long requested thing was documentation on how to deploy Next.js in various environments in different ways. And this will be coming as we stabilize this interface. And we're going to be testing with the partners, of course. And we'll be tweaking things as needed before we stabilize it. And we'll have to be having some beta releases and just lots of dog fooding. And then the GA. So all our partners will be releasing together, hopefully. Um, and yeah, so overview of the benefits. So we have simplified deployments. You no longer have to reverse engineer anything. It should be platform agnostic. You should just write your Next.js app and not have to worry about if it's going to break on this platform or in Docker or anywhere like that. And then hopefully we have optimized resources. Like you shouldn't have to worry about cold boot slowing down your application because you're loading routes that maybe will never be requested. And then just overall, better developer experience, which we all love. And yeah. So build once, deploy everywhere, and optimize automatically from your provider. And yeah. If you have any questions, reach out to us at the Vercel booth. And yeah. Thank you. Thanks.